to the ancient broad wall in the Jewish quarter of the old city. In front of you is one of the oldest archaeological findings in the Jewish quarter. Ruins of an early defensive wall, which was apparently built during the first temple period, approximately 2,700 years ago. This important finding supports the hypothesis that during the era, the roofs covered two hilltops: Mount Moriah to the east and Mount Zion to the west, where you are now standing. The city of Jerusalem was destroyed and rebuilt many times. Some of the most ancient ruins of the city were covered up by subsequent construction in later periods. Due to its hilly topography, Jerusalem is a densely built city. This factor, as well as the restriction imposed by Muslim rulers, hindered serious excavation of the city until the middle of the 19th century. As a result, there is a limited knowledge of ancient Jerusalem, in general, and of the first temple period in particular. After the reunification of Jerusalem in 1967, the Company for the Restoration and Development of the Jewish Quarter in the Old City of Jerusalem received a mandate to clear away the damage and rubble and rebuild the Jewish Quarter. This was done in cooperation with the Department of Antiquities and thus began the important process of researching historical Jerusalem. The Old City was declared a protected heritage site and no construction was permitted in the vicinity of ruins without first conducting an archaeological excavation to preserve precious antiquities. This led to the excavation on a massive scale never seen before in Jerusalem. The work in the Jewish Quarter was led by the late Professor Nachman Avigad. We learn from the Book of Kings that King Hezekiah greatly fortified Jerusalem in the 8th century BCE by building a massive wall and routing the Gihon Spring so there would be access to water inside the city. There had been a lack of evidence to support the imposing size of Jerusalem described in the Bible, particularly in regard to the question whether or not Jerusalem covered two hilltops during the first temple, and if it indeed covered two hilltops, up to where on Mount Zion did the city extend? Yosef ben Matatiahu, Joseph is Flavius, relates that the city was built on two hills during the time of the second temple. Excavation reached down to the bedrock, and an ancient settlement dating back to the 8th century BCE was discovered, along with many holy shards of household vessels typical of that era. With this background, we can begin the story of the Broad Wall. During excavations, conducted by Professor Avigad and his team in the early 1970s, a large pile of rocks was identified. The shards below it led them to believe that they were dealing with a massive wall dating from the first temple a time referred to historically as the Israelite period. But the archaeologists still didn't understand what purpose the wall served. As the excavation progressed and they uncovered the dimensions of its surface, they started to realize that this wall was much thicker than usual. In the end, it was discovered to be seven meters wide with an estimated height of eight meters. We can get a sense of the original height of the ancient wall by looking at the 8 meter high marker on the adjacent building. To learn more details about the wall and how it compares to Jerusalem walls from other periods, we recommend looking at the diagram on display. Other structures on top of the broad wall were carefully removed in the process of verifying whether it was the period of the first temple. Eventually, 40 meters of the wall were exposed. The pottery shards found at the base confirmed without a doubt when it was built. It took months of deliberation and double checking before archaeologists officially declare that it is, in fact, the Israelite wall from the days of the first temple. There was great excitement on the part of the excavators because everyone understood the significance of their findings. Professor Nachman Avigad expressed his feelings with the words, We've made history. The sides of the wall were constructed with large rocks, and the inside was filled with smaller stones. Parts of the wall were made up of seven layers of stone reaching a height of three meters. Next to the wall, one can see ruins of a settlement dating from the time of the first temple. It seems that these were houses which had to be destroyed to make way for the wall. We are reminded of the words of the prophet Isaiah. During this stone conversation with King Hezekiah regarding preparations to fortify the city in anticipation of the arrival of the Assyrian army in the year 701 BCE, the prophet was describing the steps the king was taking to fortify the city, and you numbered the houses of Jerusalem, and you broke down the houses to fortify the wall, and you made a basin between the two walls for the water of the old pool. Isaiah 22, 10.
King Hezekiah really did understand the danger and built fortification walls around the city, which ultimately prevented its capture by King Sennacherib. The case of archaeological evidence confirming an event described in the Bible has solved one of the most important and puzzling questions concerning the development of Jerusalem. For this eternal and indivisible city, we have received exciting confirmation of its existence as an important Jewish city on this western mountain during the days of the first temple. Other findings during the ongoing excavations in a Jewish quarter are the burnt house from the time of the destruction of the second temple and the Herodian Quarter. We highly recommend you visit these sites as well and view the remains of luxurious homes which were destroyed when Jerusalem was captured by the Romans in 70 CE. The Horva Synagogue is also a fascinating place to visit. It has been the symbol of the Jewish Quarter since